You guys know how I show you what I paid for the records and the actual value of it and the savings that I did? Wait till the end of this video. I'm going to show the total savings on this whole haul. I don't even know what it is yet. I haven't done the math, but man, it is insane because man, there are so many super valuable records. I found this three for $10 bin. All right. I stopped in Schuyler, Nebraska just to grab a bite of food, followed by GPS to a Mexican restaurant. And I discovered this whole little downtown area here that I had no idea existed. Um, so I think I'd drive around, see what I could find. And I happened across this thrift store here, the m and thrift store. Went in, they didn't have anything. But the lady told me they got another store out in the country. And she said they got some records out there. She gave me some really half, half-assed instructions on how to get there. <laughs> <laughs> Wish me luck. I have no idea if I'll be able to find it by the direction she gave me, but I'm going to give it a shot. This place is a clusterfuck. I did find their other thrift store. It's in an old schoolhouse in the middle of nowhere. Just cornfields, several miles outside of town. No signs leading you there. No sign at the store, I don't think even. Uh, you would you never just happen across this place. You'd have to know it exists or you'd never find it. <laughs> I forgot what it was I picked it up here, but I don't know what that is, but I'm sorry I touched it. <laughs> Hello. Howdy. Is this your place? Uh, it's Jerry's the oh. in the wheelchair. Did oh. you come by there? Yeah, I did. Okay. All right. I was just looking for records. All right there. Okay. Yep. I see it. Thank you. Lots of Christmas. What if I found Frank and Teicher's Adventures and Carols? I would be super excited. There's JJ. Alright, leaving, leaving the old abandoned schoolhouse out in the middle of nowhere. Like, really? Out in the middle of nowhere? Stuck out. Didn't get anything but a little goofy little refrigerator magnet. But I'm going to mark this place on my GPS and who knows, might stop back periodically. It looks like the kind of place that, who knows, maybe from time to time they might get something. I am in York, Nebraska. This is one place that I've never been to before. I've driven by damn near every single day. Um, Marble Museum plus Antiques and Flea Market. I definitely need to get in there sometime, check it out. I've been to pretty much every other place in York that I know of. There's uh, there's two thrift stores. There's um, there's some antique stores, there's even a used bookstore that I've been to here, but I've never been to this place, so uh, sometime in the near future, we're going to have to go in there. Alright, well, since I'm here, 
I'm gonna be driving by almost all of them anyway. I'm gonna show you almost all the other places here in York, Nebraska that I have been to before. This used bookstore right here. Uh, they did not have records there. They did have one record and I bought it from him. He had it on just kind of propped up behind his desk on the wall. It was like a very old 1940s even or 1950s picture disc and it ended up being worth a pretty good amount of money too. Um, he sold me that for two dollars. Then right up the street here, right there on this next block, focus right there's the goodwill I don't get to go there very often because they don't open till 11 o'clock and it is like 730 right now so I definitely ain't gonna make it now there's another place up here not a thrift store not an antique store not any place where you can get records but a lot of you guys will recognize it. You got you people who stick around and watch my videos all the way to the end. You guys will recognize this place right up here. It's up here on the right. I need to get over in this other lane though, because I'm about to hang a left here. That building right there. Oh, where is it? There. Can't see the signs very well. But that is the heavy metal supply company that some of you saw in one of my secret videos at the end of my other video. Hey everybody, Tuco Vintage Vinyl Hunter here. I know there's a, there's a lot of metalheads that watch my channel, so uh, I figure I'd take you along with me today. I'm going to go in here, heavy metal supply company, get me a few heavy metal supplies. I'm looking for... Um, I'm looking for uh, Venom, Black Metal on vinyl, probably a um, uh, Metal Zone Distortion Pedal from my guitar and a case of PBR. So uh, let's go on inside. Okay, okay, I need to get out of here quick. I, I pretty much just about got my ass kicked here. Uh, Turns out the store is not what I thought it was. It's some sort of uh, welding supply company, and they uh, almost beat my ass and threw me out. So I need to get out of here quick. All right, see you guys. All right, there will be one more thrift store I'll be back to show you. There's my customer right there. I'm going to go deliver tires here. All right, down the street down here. There are a, uh, two or three antique stores that I have been to. I'm not going to be driving by them today. But I'm going to be going by another thrift store. But hey, we got a little development over here. Is this an employee? There's someone at the heavy metal supply company. Let's see if they look like a metalhead. They might just be a customer. What's going on over here? Get out of your truck. Oh well. And last, last and also least, the last thrift store in York, Nebraska, Blue Valley Community Action. That big tan building there is just actually the left side of that building. It's a little um, charity thrift store. I've never found anything there. I might have found a CD or two, but uh, like I always say, I never give up on them though, because you never know when you're going to find something at a thrift store, because it's all just people's donations. Who knows, Sometime, someday someone might donate their, their late uncle's record collection. We're now pulling into 402 Vinyl. It's located in the South Roads Mall in Omaha, Nebraska. I got a huge haul to show you from here. Some unbelievable stuff. Tons of stuff from their three for ten dollar bin. Tons of stuff from their dollar bins. All right, I'm in the South Roads Mall. South side of Omaha. 
pretty much Omaha, Bellevue, somewhere right in that area. It's basically just an old abandoned mall. Well, not abandoned, there's some, there's like a ex fitness place right here, some offices. 402 Vinyl. It used to be kind of a secret spot. Yeah, the secret's out though. It's a pretty well known record store now. I don't know what I was thinking. I didn't shoot any footage of the dig inside the store. Uh, but I do have some abandoned footage I shot about a year ago. I was going to do a video there, but the, the footage turned out to be too shaky and too crappy quality. But uh, I think I could salvage a little bit of it to show you on this video, just to show you what it's like inside there. So when I'm flipping through this stuff, he may not even have this stuff anymore. But as you can see here, 402 Vinyl has an incredible selection of top-notch vintage stereo equipment. We've got, I'd say, three main sections of records here. There's the three for ten dollars section. Uh, there's the dollar room, which that even that often spills out into the main room. And then there's their main section, which is all just their higher end stuff and just tons of killer stuff in there. Nothing is alphabetized, nothing is categorized. You pretty much have to dig through every record, but that doesn't even matter though because there's so much cool stuff in there. And like you dig through every record, you find all sorts of stuff that you want. You didn't even know you wanted it until you see it. And here's just a taste of what kind of stuff you can find in their main section of records. Like I said, the selection is just insane. Most record stores have like, um, you know, they'll have uh, the holy moly wall, it's called, you know, where they got some real bangers hanging up on the wall, some of their heavy hitters, their higher end records and stuff, you know, they'll have maybe 20 records hanging up on the wall. 402 Vinyl doesn't have that, but man, their whole main section is like a holy moly wall. Everything in there, there's just so much killer high-end stuff and and just these artists, like, you know, they'll be like, 
Some stores, you know, they might have a few Grateful Dead records. He's got 20, 30 of them. Same with like Frank Zappa and Kiss and all sorts of stuff, man. Just the selection at this store is just unbelievable. I, I kind of went through, I pulled a bunch of stuff out for them on that, brought them into the other room. thing you've ever seen. The sad thing is I'm not the biggest fan of that album. Alright, let's check out this crazy haul from 402 Vinyl, Omaha, Nebraska. Um, I'm gonna do, I got broken down into just two sections here. I got the uh, stuff from the dollar bins, uh, which we're gonna do first, and then we're gonna do the um, four for 10, and there's about 50 records here. So I'm gonna just try and hammer through these as fast as I can. Don't skip over this dollar bin though, because man, all sorts of killer stuff in here too. But then when we get to the three for 10, shit's gonna get insane. You don't wanna miss on this, stick around. All right, let's get through these as quick as possible. All right, dollar room stuff first. We've got Julie London. Julie is her name. 1959. Jazz, pop, vocal sort of stuff. Julie London. Julie at home. 1960. 
More Julie London. 1959, your number please. And 1962, the best of Julie. Julie London, 1962. This one's a bit seam split, but man, how cool is this? Rock Pretty Baby. This is Jimmy Doley and the Dinglings. It's a soundtrack, features a lot of rock and roll songs written by Henry Mancini. I haven't got to listen to this yet, but man, I can't wait to dig into that. That sounds really cool. I normally don't pick up Elvis records, but I saw this one and I was like, that looks pretty damn cool. In fact, it's um, it opens uh, this way. And I just picked it up because it looked cool and it was a dollar, you know. Turns out it's a 1978 bootleg of uh, Elvis Presley. Chet Atkins picks on the Beatles. Man, if you guys don't know Chet Atkins, man, he's just one of the most amazing guitarists ever, man. I could just sit there and watch him play for hours and I have done it on YouTube. Do it. Do it sometime. You, you, you'll find that you just can't stop watching them. Red Fox at home. You guys know about me and Red Fox. I got my, my collection is getting pretty damn big now. 1967. You know, he does dirty humor. He's uh, Sanford from Sanford and Son. Another Red Fox. Have one on me from uh, 1960. This is the original U.S. first label variation. Look at that cover. Red Fox, Racy Tales. It's got to be some of the most ridiculous album cover artwork ever. 1960. Hit songs from the Bahamas Volume 2 compilation of uh, reggae, funk, and soul and such. It's if you track listing there, Dollar Bin, The Fifth Estate, 1967, Ding Dong, The Witch is Dead, Psychedelic, and Bubblegum, very cool, there's the back cover for you, how cool is that for a Dollar Bin, that's what I'm saying man, A, don't neglect Dollar Bins, and B, especially 402 vinyl, man. Every time I go there, I find killer stuff in the dollar bins and the three for 10. Not just the main stuff, man. The main stuff is killer too. Basically, the rollers, dedication. They're from Scotland. Uh, they've been called the world's first boy band. I can see that. Another Bay City Rollers. Rock and Roll Love Letter. 1976. This is one I've been wanting a while. It's a local hard rock private press. This was in the dollar room. Unfortunately, it's a bit roasty here, but bittersweet. A feeling you can't hide. Yeah, very cool to find that. I mean, uh, the vinyl's actually pretty decent, but uh, you know, I'll be looking for an upgrade, but shit, this makes a good placeholder, so can't complain about that for a dollar. Also in the dollar room, the boys, the one with the Z, two Z's, I should say. Not to be confused with the other boys or the buoys. This is uh, 1978 Chicago, like biker bar band. It's uh, very Kiss sounding. In fact, it sounds a lot like Peter Chris on vocals. Sounds kind of like Kiss, with, but with horns. Also kind of a little bit like New York Dolls and dic Dictators sort of sounding. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Bee Gees, The Natural. I already had this, but uh, had to get it again for a dollar. And it's in beautiful condition. It's probably an upgrade. And with that promo sticker on it, too. 1974 Bee Gees. Um, someday, I keep mentioning it, someday I will, I'm going to have to and I'll show you... Uh, my, um, I got a huge Bee Gees collection. In fact, I just got four more in the mail today. Some pretty obscure Bee Gees albums. So yeah, someday soon I'm going to have to show you that. Ventures, Ventures a Go-Go, 1965. Can't go wrong with the Ventures for a dollar. You know them, instrumental rock. Hi-Fi Christmas Party. 
You know, I'm always looking for space age bachelor pad music. You know, anytime I see something hi-fi in the name, uh, I pick it up just in case it's going to be something really cool. You never can. T a lot of times you can't tell by the artwork. A lot of times the music is a lot better and crazier than the artwork. Even Christmas stuff. Uh, this 1958 Dominico Savino. Um, I did listen to a bit of this on uh, YouTube though. And it's not nearly as space age as I was hoping it would be. For a dollar though, I figure, you know, can't hurt to give it a shot. Eddie Harris, 1961, Exodus to Jazz, Hard Bop, very cool for a dollar bean. Alex Chilton and the boys, the box top, Super Hits, 1968. This has the letter, you know, give me a ticket, uh, airplane. Speaking of the boys and the buoys this is their uh the buoys self-titled album yeah yeah it's self-titled it's not called timothy it's not called give up your guns it's not called dinner music it's self-titled the buoys 1971 uh psychedelic progressive sort of stuff uh this is a uh oh, we'll have to bust it open here um to show you this is unipack and and if you can see it here, promotional promotional copy, not for sale. So very cool to have a promotional copy of the buoys. A couple more dollar in records. Then we're going to get into this crazy three for $10 bin. Jerry Lee Lewis, Sun Story. Of course, a bunch of his early Sun recordings. This is a 1977 compilation. Oh, oh, you guys see that, All right? It's got to go. Look at this ugly, is that like some of the ugliest, um, what's that called, cutout? They drill holes in it, this thing, is, that's gnarly, man. They hacked away at that thing. But anyway, let's do Yeah, I always take the shrink off if, if there's not a good hype sticker on it or a really cool old price sticker you know lots of times those are pretty cool if there's nothing like that on there i take the shrink off and i'm just gonna put it in a bag so it's still gonna be as protected as it ever was because that shrink's looking ugly you know les paul and mary ford brazil jazz some space age exotica stuff here uh, of course, you know, Les Paul is a um, pioneer of the uh, solid body electric guitar. You know, what are the most known guitars there are? The Fender guitar and the Gibson Les Paul. All right, you guys ready? Here comes the three for $10 bin records. Some of the stuff I found in there is just absolutely insane. Start off with Sugarloaf, 1971, Spaceship Earth. Uh, blues rock, progressive sort of stuff from Denver, Colorado. This is their uh, second album. Their first album has that song, uh, Green Eyed Lady. Uh, I was turned on to these guys by my friend Kyle. Kyle, if you're watching the video, what up, dog? Three for ten dollar bin. Right there. The Strange Loves. I Want Candy. 1965 formed in 1964 in New York City but they used to pretend that they were from Australia and uh, I'm a sucker for stupid gimmicks like that uh, you guys know I want candy too probably mostly because of uh, Bow Wow Wow did a cover of that song Phil Lynott solo in Soho you know Phil Lynott from uh, Thin Lizzy. May he rest in peace. This is his first solo album, 1980. You know, Thin Lizzy. Um, the boys are back in town and jailbreak and stuff. Another one. Are you guys sitting down? Three for $10 bin. Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. The 1972 American Tour 2 LP bootleg. 1975. Crazy. This is a pig's eye bootleg. 
Slade. This is a 1982 reissue of their um, their 1972 album um, Slade Alive. Spain. This is a Spanish version of it. Not sung in Spanish. Don't get me wrong. It's not sung in Spanish. UFO, Strangers in the Night, 1979, double live LP, you know, um, Michael Schenker era stuff. Super cool. Glad I'm building up my UFO collection. $3 I spent for that. The Ventures, Running Strong, 1978. This is a compilation of um, some of their original compositions. Another banger. This is in the three for ten dollar bin. Shangri La's sixty five OG, and this thing is just absolutely beautiful condition. It's got the shrink here. Let, let's, we're, we're breaking this one open, taking the bag off. It's got this ugly ass shrink on it, but it has this hype sticker, right? But that hype sticker is not on the shrink wrap. That I'm not attached to this price sticker here because uh it is scribbled out but man that that shrink wrap on there i'm not digging it so we are going to take that off right here right now and just beautify it look at how beautiful minty this thing is three for ten dollar bin for this i'm such a huge um Shangri-La's fan. Uh, it's a 1965 record, obviously, as the title suggests. Uh, styrene record. I showed my recent record store day release of the uh, Redbird Years compilation. Well, there it is, the OG right there, Redbird Records. This is the original version that has the Dum Dum Diddy on it, which was later replaced by I Can Never Go Home Anymore. How cool is that? Amazing. I'm such a huge Shangri-La fan. And to find this in the three for ten dollar bin. I don't know if you guys could see this, but that price sticker came off the shrink. There's another secret price sticker underneath it. That thing was 77 cents at one time. Let me see if I can free that. Oh, maybe. Nope. It isn't meant to be, but pretty cool. Old price sticker. You guys know how I show you what I paid for the records. I show that shows up on the text on the video on the side of the video over here. Shows what I paid for the record and the actual value of it and the savings that I did. Wait till the end of this video. I'm going to show the total savings on this whole haul. I don't even know what it is yet. I haven't done the math. Uh, but man, it is insane because man, there are so many super valuable records. I found this three for ten dollar bin. Not that this is one of them. It's the uh, Space Shuttle 1982 limited edition picture disc. This is actual NASA recordings of astronauts, uh, mission mission control, and um, President Ronald Reagan at the time. The Monkeys Live 1967. This is actually a 1987 record. Uh, all instruments and vocals done by the Monkees on this live performance. Very cool. Pete Rugolo, New Sounds. I got several of his records. I dig me some Pete Rugolo. This is an early one. Um, leaning towards Space Age. Uh, I've got several of his that are uh, much more Space Age pop. I'm not sure how Space Age this is, but I'm sure I'm going to dig it. The original drum battle, Gene Krupa and Buddy Rich. I'm a huge Buddy Rich fan. As far as drummers go, I don't think anyone can beat Buddy Rich. In fact, I know you guys all love and worship Neil Peart. I remember Neil Peart, um, on something I was watching, he was talking about Buddy Rich. And he was talking about, like, he watched... Um, Buddy Rich play, and he kind of got discouraged thinking about how, like, he's never going to be able to play as good as Buddy Rich there. But then he said, like, a kind of a calm feeling came over him when he realized that no one would be able to. 
It's a 1960 album, uh, Book of the Month pressing of this Verve record. I've been wanting this one for a while. Ever since I first discovered it, since I first saw it, I'm going to have to open this up, ain't I? Let's dig it out of here because it has this cool die cut cover. I got to be extra careful with this thing too because this thing is super minty. I don't want to bang it up, but son of, son of Dracula, Harry Nilsson on this cool, I can fit it on here. Cool die cut cover here. Um, yeah, Harry Nelson, Son of Dracula. It's uh, it's music from the Apple film starring Harry Nelson and Ring Ringo Starr. Features that song, Without You. You know, I can't live if living is without you. Uh, and, you know, with this vampire cover, you know, since I was in a band with a vampire name, you know, we had a band Nosferatu. And they on the wall back here, well, we got Klaus Kinski Nosferatu right here. And there's a flyer of my old band Nosferatu right there, uh, vampire themed. So I had to get this vampire themed um, Harry Nilsson record. Very cool to find that in the three for ten uh, section. Um he was one of the Hollywood vampires. You ever heard of that? It was like a drinking club started by Alice Cooper. It featured Alice Cooper, Keith Moon, Ringo Starr, Harry Nilsson, Mickey Dolenz, uh, John Belushi, Mark Bolin was a Hollywood vampire, Keith Emerson, John Lennon, Bernie Taupin. This record features some of those guys on it. Uh, obviously, Harry Nelson has got Ringo Starr in it, too, obviously. It says George Harrison did the cowbell on a song here. Gary Wright is on here. You know, Gary Wright, um, Dreamweaver, he does some piano on here. This thing, like I said, is in super minty condition. And it includes, I'm going to dig it out here, it includes... Well, while I got it out, let's show you the, uh, there's the label on it. Rapple. <laughs> Rapple Records. But, okay, this also includes, can you read that? You can, you can pause it and read that if you want. Look at that. Iron-on comes with it. Very cool. This Found in the three for ten dollar bin, Bubble Puppy. Wheels go round. This is a 1987 album of theirs. Uh, they had formed back in the 60s. They had an album, uh, 1969, A Gathering of Promises. And then they reformed in uh, 1984 and they released this album. They also released another album in 2017, by the way, a live album called Certified Badass. How about that? Pretty crazy for three for ten bin, huh? I already got this. I got several of these. One of my all-time favorite albums, period. This is just, I think it's a masterpiece. Crazy World of Arthur Brown. You know, um, Fire. I am the God of Hellfire, and I bring you fire. He goes into that dance. <laughs> um, of course, um, Arthur Brown is a uh, kind of a godfather of shock rock. You know, he was doing that stuff before Alice Cooper even wearing the makeup on stage. He wore this headpiece that he'd light on fire and be uh, dancing on stage with a flaming headpiece on. So yeah, very cool. I'll pick up. I'll pick up nice copies of this every time I see it. I'll I'll, I'll have a whole shelf full of them in my collection, and I'm not sharing them. Another one in the three for ten dollar bin. Brand new cheap trick album 2016 release. Bang Zoom Crazy Hello. How crazy is that? Are you guys ready? Found the seeds. So we've got some little water damage, a little wrinkling on there. You can see it when the light hits it right. 
Raw and Alive in Concert at Merlin's Music Box. It's a 1979 reissue of um, 1968 release. This is on Pickwick Records. Easily one of the greatest psychedelic uh, garage rock bands there is. But speaking of the seeds, are you guys sitting down? You're going to want to be sitting down for this one. Unbelievable. Three for ten, Ben. Don't forget, three for ten dollars is what I paid for these. Boom. The Seeds, 1967, Future. First mono pressing right here. Just super, super minty all the way around. Absolutely crisp and perfect in almost every way. Small amount of uh, ring wear there. The vinyl, I'm not going to pull the vinyl out, but man, it is as beautiful as this. And it's crazy to find something this rare and valuable in the 3 for $10 bin. We ain't done with the garage yet. We got the Standells, the best of the Standells. This is a 1983 Rhino comp of their stuff, um, Garage Rock. Uh, you know their song, uh, Dirty Water. Love that dirty water. And this thing is super minty. And you know what? We're going to bust this one out too. Might as well. This thing in the original shrink still. Pop it all out of there. Free it. We're going to liberate it. How cool is that? Three for $10, man. I already got this one. Give us a little wink. Oops, see if I can work it. There we go. Wink, wink. Ugh. Got a lazy. <laughs> what? Uh, they should have one like really big bug eye. <laughs> like those guys with their eyes pop out. All right, the sweet. You guys know the sweet. I hope um, this. I think is uh, one of the. What I mean, I, I like a whole bunch of the sweet. Now, I think this is one of like the probably the three most essential sweet albums, though. This and um, Desolation Boulevard and uh, Sweet Fanny Adams are some of my uh, most recommended sweet albums. I think the sweet, I think the sweet are one of the most underrated bands. That there is out there, man. They are so, so killer. This is their 1976 album. Give us a wink. And what I was reading on the back here, I think I get the joke now. Give us a wink. With all these quotes on the back, wink off. Winking will make you go blind. Are a bunch of winkers. So I think basically you switch the word wink with wank. And it's uh, a whole whole nother meaning. Nudge, nudge, wank, wank. Wank me and stop one. I don't get that one. Wank off. Wanking will make you go blind. See what I'm talking about? But speaking of the sweet. I already had that one. I did not have this one though. Sweet Fanny Adams. You know that song of theirs? Sweet F.A. Well, now you know what it means. Sweet Fanny Adams. This is their 1974 album. This is a UK first pressing of that album. In the three for $10 bin. Crazy. Crazy. Speaking of the sweet, it keeps going. The sweet featuring Little Willie and Blockbuster. Unfortunately, someone wrote... So I wrote a little bit of stuff on there. It sucks too because this thing is just super minty in every other way. Uh, like I just said though, this is a 1973 album by the way. Like I said, um, to me, The Sweet are just one of the most underrated bands that there is. If you agree with me, let me know. Let the world know down in the comments. Am I right? I know I'm right. How about that? The Young Bloods. This is a self-titled album. It says Get Together on there, but I believe it's self-titled. 
Of course, it has the song get together on there that you know, you know, because Nirvana did such a beautiful cover of it. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? That was a joke. They did it. They did it, but it was awful. By the way, this is a um, 1969 reissue of um, their 67 album. The, uh, the other version actually has a different cover on it. Uh, that song, Get, Get Together, which is on here, is um, practically a national anthem for the peace and love movement. It's another one of those albums that I pick up every single time I find it. I think everyone I've ever seen, I've bought it. Another one of my favorite albums. This is one most people don't get. But if you do, you love it. There's some, I do know people who love Tiny Tim as much as I do. This is 1968, his first album, God Bless Tiny Tim. This is the first pressing of his first album. Uh, you know his song, Tiptoe Through the Tulips. He does that super falsetto voice, plays the... Um, ukulele it's very outsider type stuff too uh this is this is one of the most psychedelic albums in my whole collection i got a lot of psychedelic stuff in my, i mean i know i'm no expert on psych but i do got a bunch of stuff but i do have a lot of trippy ass stuff in my collection and this is one of the craziest weirdest uh most psychedelic records in my entire collection uh, like I say, it's definitely not for everyone, no, but uh, if you love them, you love them. You know what I'm talking about if you, if you do. How about this? Deep Purple. Greatest Purple German. I don't know what that says. Maybe someone can fill me in in the comments below. But German, 1985, two LP compilation. There's a track listing for you. It's got songs from Mach 1, 2, and 3. Uh, not 100% sure if there's any Mach 4 on here. No, it doesn't look like any Mach 4. Richie Blackmore's on all this. Mach 4 is basically Mach 3, but with um, Tommy Bolin on guitar. How about that? Chuck Berry, Duck Walking, 10-inch. 1983 10 inch they weren't doing a bunch of that sort of stuff back then you know what i'm saying this is a uk 10 inch compilation if you ask me if there was like in fact that's a good question if they were going to do uh the mount rushmore of rock and roll what four heads would you put on the mount rushmore of rock and roll i'm not exactly sure what the answer is but i do know chuck berry is going to be one of them one of my picks anyway I think he's one of the most important people in rock and roll history. Dick Dale and his Deltones Singles Collection 2LP Sundays Compilation 2010 release. This is in beautiful condition, too, in the three for ten dollar bin. Of course, you know, Dick Dale, uh, king of surf guitar. He really. Uh, he really became a household name, like uh, when they used his song at the beginning of uh, Pulp Fiction. You know, um, everybody sit down or I'll execute every motherfucking one of you. It's 1971 Johnny Cash compilation, um, Pickwick, Rock Island Line. Very cool. I got so, I got so much Johnny Cash, it ain't even funny. Another one of my favorite bands right here. Let's see, I'm going to have to scoot up in there so you can see it. Adam and the Ants. Ant Music, 12-inch single with uh, Don't Be Square, Be There on the back side. Look at that cool uh, sleeve it comes in. Picked up this Uriah Heap album that I didn't have. High and Mighty. This has uh, John Wetton on bass. You know him from... Um, Yes, he did some yes. He did Asia. He did King Crimson. More Body Rich. Super rich. Look at that cool gold cover, too. Oh, man. And check out check out this crazy... Uh, I'm going to have to pull this out so you can see it better. Check out this crazy evil scully face. I know it wasn't supposed to turn out this crazy, but that... There's just something wrong with that picture. Buddy Rich killing it there. 
Perez Prados rock combo 1961 does uh of course latin sort of stuff this is i think i haven't listened to this one but i'm assuming by the name it's kind of rock kind of mambo but not all of his stuff is like that he does actually probably my favorite exotica album uh voodoo suite very cool happy to have that and this thing is in beautiful condition another huge ass banger from the three for ten bin, Hal Blaine, psychedelic percussion. Hal Blaine is a drummer from the Wrecking Crew. This album's from 1967. Psych, jazz rock. It's in great condition, except it does have kind of see that discoloring and a little bit of seam split on the bottom. The vinyl is in beautiful condition. Uh, one, one thing I thought was pretty interesting. Where does it say that anyway? Oh, right here. Okay. How cool is this, man? Gary Coleman plays percussion on this. What? Of course, like I said, he's a session drummer uh, for, he was in the Wrecking Crew. He's estimated to be the most recorded studio drummer in the history of the music industry. Over 35,000 sessions and 6,000 singles. He's on 150 top 100 hits, including 40 number one hits. Found in the three for $10 bin. Jerry Lee Lewis, original Sun greatest hits. Look at all those, let's see if I can get in there, you can see it, all those records. I don't know if that's on the stage or if they kind of just photoshopped that together. That's pretty cool, though. Uh, this is a 1989 compilation album of his. How cool is that? Eddie Cochran, the very best of Eddie Cochran. 1975, it's got uh, Summertime Blues on it, uh, 20 Flight Rock. Come on, everybody. Killer stuff there. Divinals. 1985 what a life not familiar with this album yet i did uh i did listen to the first song on uh, on this album though i listened to it on youtube i was pleasantly surprised i really dig early divinals you know all the boys in town super killer early divinals for sure killer stuff this i'm not sure about though but i did uh i did listen to that first song and i was pleasantly surprised they're uh New Wave. This is their third album. They're from Australia. You know, much later than this. Uh, boy, 89, 90, something like that. They had the hit single, I Touch Myself. You know, when I think about you, I touch myself. I know. I did that great. I know. You don't need to tell me how great my singing is. I got the voice of an angel. It's a gift. Realistic stereo test record. I got a whole bunch of stereo test records. I'm a sucker for this sort of stuff, especially. Could you see that? How long is that? <laughs> I'm like gumming up. I'm a... especially um, realistic. This is a 1963 stereo test record by the way but realistic uh my turntable is a realistic lab 420 i also have a realistic uh quadraphonic receiver which uh model number is escaping me at the moment so yeah whenever i see any sort of realistic related uh record stuff and such like this this thing i definitely pick them up johnny cash Original Golden Hits, Volume 3, Compilation from 1971. Wishbone Ash. The original Wishbone Ash. This is a 1977 German compilation album. Very cool. Genuine Banksy. Alright, let's take a look at the totals. Totals of what I spent. The total values of the records, the total savings. I figure since it's going to be such big savings, I figure I better go to the big ass covered wagon. Yeah. 
I know what you're thinking. Sure, you can find great records like that at a record store, but can you find good deals at a thrift store? Well, yes you can. Check out this video right here where we score huge at a thrift store and you're right there with me as it happens. Thanks everyone for watching and I will see you on the next one.